Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, <laughs> I just found out about the uh, the scheduled function uh, right when I started another Indiegogo, and now I don't. Now it's like I don't want to show the campaign because I want to tell you stuff that's happening right now. But right now is actually last night, so you know, actually it's probably good. So I, I'll promote like in every other video, or you know, at least once a day. But anyway, this is Year of the Villain. Oh, no, sorry, this is Catwoman. And all I can say is, let's just, damn, <laughs> that's a cover. That is a cover. So we just had the Charlie's Angels movie just super flop. Although Mecha Random 42 says it's pretty solid. So I'm going to see it today. No, tomorrow. But ah! The scheduling thing is really messing. I'm recording this. On Monday night, but uh, this is going to be on Tuesday morning. Then I'm going to go see the movie. Anyway, and I was, you know, making a big deal about why did. First of all, one weird thing is there's three Charlie's Angels, and yet one of them is like a foot taller than the other two. It is so distracting in all of the shots. Usually, you want to kind of like do things with, you know, you have the tall girl wear flats, and the shorter girls they'll wear heels but no no it's just it's like one of it's all these really wonky compositions but one of the things about charlie's angels is that they were angels they were fashion plates they were models they weren't average girls in yes queen and that's how superheroes are and super villains and super women and just women in comics they should all just look like this everyone but aunt may if you're there you get the aunt may exception if you're aunt may you don't have to be stacked like this. You don't have to be thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. But if you're a superhero, if you're a supervillain, especially one who's one of the aspects about her is that she's supposed to be a very alluring. Yes, you do this. Jason, Dave Finch. I thought it was Jason Fabok. It's David Finch. You keep going just like this. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, she looks so great. So anyway, this is you're the villain-ish kind of, not really. It's one of those, there's so many crossover events that, like, what is this? What is Year of the Villain? Oh, all the villains are teaming up. What? They're helping, what? Don't, what? It's like called story, <laughs> the event. What's the event? Oh, there's going to be stories in all of our comics. So, I haven't reviewed Catwoman, I think, since summer of last year when it started. I said it's really solid, I really respect it, but... Not quite my thing. Um, so I'm dipping back in after just suffering through a year and a half of Tom King. And I've got to say, first of all, like a skunk spray, Tom King stinks up everything. But if you can get, the, the wind can blow it away and you use the, what, the oxygenated uh, the spray to get the feels of the, like, you can work with these characters. So... If you've only known Selena Kyle from Tom King books, where she's this ball-busting, condescending mommy wife, you don't, you haven't been reading Selena Kyle. She has a distinct personality that is not that. That's just Tom King's little peccadilloes and issues with women. What she has been is a very kind of, you know, uh, the, the classic thief with a heart of gold. So, Joelle Jones, who I keep calling Noel all the time, I think I'm thinking of Noel Stevenson. Joelle Jones has been writing and drawing this for about a year and a half, and it's just good. And it gets, like, no press at all. Nobody talks about it. You have a woman writing and drawing a female character, making good stories, having good sales. I, I, when I do my comic run, I'm Catwoman is just staying with good sales, like, every single month. And it's getting no press because she doesn't fit into the mold. You know, I just t did a video talking about Lynn Barley. She came in in the 70s, highly respected. And quite frankly, the, the milkshake type of girls, the SJWs, have ruined women's rep in comic books. In the 70s and 80s and 90s when a new woman, you know, you know in the 2000s, Gail Simone, you know, coming out. When a new woman came on the scene in comics, you would say, oh, what's up with her? Uh, check it out. That was pretty good. And now 
I'm not the only one. You see a new name and you go, oh, geez, how how this person get hired? And then it's even worse because the, the, the companies are virtue signaling like, we want to hire women. We want to hire women. And then they hire a woman who's not good and it's awful with the, with the customers. And then you say, I think you were just hired because you're a woman. And the, and the company just said, we're just looking for women. They don't, they don't say talent. It's just, it's just a net. They're just casting a net. Um, but uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure where Joelle Jones came from. I'm not sure what she did before Catwoman. I think she did some other fill-ins and stuff. But she's just good. And it's insane that someone this good consistently with good sales and good interactions with the fans, it's like she doesn't freaking exist. I've got this uh, sequel idea uh, for, for a sci-fi and it's about, you know how everything with first contact is a really, really big deal with alien cultures? This one is the idea about first contact and for plot reasons that I don't want to ruin another story, uh, they just ignore the person. They just ignore them. So they're like a ghost. Like they walk around, but no one, like, if, if you even like bump into the person, you'll, it's just like a Roomba, like going around a dog. You'll just walk around that person and just pretend they're not there. Um, and it's kind of a form of punishment and like cultural uh, protection. It's like uh, isolationism, but still allowing the people in. So Joelle Jones is like this woman without a country in the, in the comic book industry. She exists. She makes good stuff. She's good with the customers. It sells. It's consistently good. She writes and draws. I got to ch check if she inks. Nobody will talk about her. So I'm going to talk about her. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, a year and a half into the storyline. I really haven't read that much. I got to say one thing that I freaking hate. One of the many, many, many reasons that... Uh, that sound you might have heard is uh, Luna uh, shaking with her um, uh, cone on. She had to get coned again. Um, so uh, she's uh, she got a little sick. We had to give her some medicine. She's scratching. So she's, she's getting coned. She's about two days away from getting the cone off. But um, anyway, so I, I got to go back to the one page. So this is a whole page. And you can see that top panel is, is pretty small. Um, if you read it, if it was real life, well, <laughs> you're probably looking at this as a phone, but I just expanded it to, on my tablet, the size it would be in real life. So the panel is good. The problem is the resolution is not high enough. When you click on it, like, it's all fuzzy. Okay, it's, oh, now it's, oh yeah. Okay, so look, it's like fuzzy. I know it's a cat, but what I'm saying is several of these, like, it, Comicsology needs to get their shit together and scan in comics at a higher resolution. Yes, I, need, I know you need to do some back end. You need to work with some web developers. You need to... No, come on. No, like this is like some like 90s style resolution. Um, so it's a storyline that I don't know. It has this uh, country called Casa Perdido, Villa Hermoso. Which I don't know, I have no idea what it is, but I guess it's it's like uh, Selena's uh, home away from home and she's got some storyline going there. One of the things I just liked is just hearing Selena's internal monologue while seeing some good art and her sounding like her old self or, you know, Joelle Jones's take on her, but like a person that you don't hate. I mean, my favorite version of Selena Kyle is from uh, Selena's Big Score by uh, Darwin Cook. I mean, that, oh, geez, I got to find that and review it. People don't talk about that book enough. It's so good. Oh, and somebody else, I forget, I think it was, uh, I saw Tom Scioli talking on Facebook. He said Darwin Cook told him that he once pitched a G.I. Joe comic, I'm assuming to IDW, about the first year of G.I. Joe's, like back in the 60s, and there were only five of them. And the, their code names were Soldier, Sailor, uh, well, pilot instead of airman, uh, a marine, and coast guard. I don't know. Uh, but um, that, uh, God, just imagine a Darwin Cook. Oh, my, wow, a Darwin Cook G.I. Joe. Jeez. Um, so uh, it was just good. It's good seeing her talk about, you know, talk like herself. Uh, she looks uh, she looks beautiful. 
it's like this mysterious uh, storyline having to do with the Lazarus Pit and this really uh, freaky looking woman with no nose. And um, here's where it gets really wonky. So I'm going to go to the browse pages. So there's a voice here and it's Selena Kyle, but it's also Joel Jones's version of Selena Kyle. And it's consistent and it's interesting. It reminds me of the old version with something new. And then, okay, so boomer, 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 boom. Oh, I want to, uh -huh. okay, so she puts on her little uh, uh, cool uh, cat helmet, which that's that's going to be just trash on wind resistance. Um, and then we, we're cutting back to, you know, her, you know, remembering her life. You know, she's talking about balance between good and evil, and it's good. And then all of a sudden, she starts talking about Bruce. And I, I saw, like, a Bleeding Cool article. It's like, this is what Catwoman really thinks about Bruce. The problem is, once she starts talking about Bruce, it stops so sounding like Joelle Jones. And it sounds like trash Tom King writing. She's like, until I stopped dancing and chose to fall. Falling with you never felt like the destruction I feared. It was closer to salvation. Blissfully unaware and happy to fall with you forever. But nature demanded its balance. And I closed my... And then she goes back to talking like Catwoman. And we're back to the adventure. And it's pretty cool. There's some Lazarus stuff, shenanigans. That's about as much as I could show. Um, for the copyright gods to smite me. But, um... Get... Get... Get Tom King's stink off of everything. You got a good run. You got a, a, an artist, a female artist. Everyone's being so woke trying to promote women. You got a talented, professional woman writing and... and well, let's go back to the beginning and see if we can get the, the credits. Whatever. I don't, I don't like digital comics. Uh, so... Wow, it just says by Joelle Jones. And then the next thing mentioned is uh, uh, the colorist. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, what can I say? You got clowns getting all the notoriety in the world and you got an actual, like, rock-solid talent completely being ignored. It's insane. Uh, so, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description for Iron Sights, Two Psychos, and Jawbreakers, uh, God King, which is still available. I printed some extras. Um, so, and uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go see Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Maybe I'll love it. I probably will love it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.